We're joined on the line um, with Tammy Mitchell Woods from Oklahoma. Tammy, are you there? Hey, I'm here. Awesome. I'm so excited to have you in on my show today for a call in feature, Tammy. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So I've been following you for quite some time now online, and, and you just seem like the sweetest person known to humankind. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and you're an awesome drummer, and I, I really get a, a, a kick out of listening to everything that you do and all the videos you put up, and I thought it was so cool that you created the Drummer Girls United. I've got my T-shirt, you know, and all that groovy yeah, stuff. That's right, yeah. Yeah. In fact, I need to make you some more videos. So, Tammy, tell me a little bit. Uh, just let's educate our listeners on, you know, what you do. How long have you been drumming? How did you get into drumming? Okay. Well, um, my mom is a pianist and, um, of course, so she wanted me to take piano and probably I was, I was playing when I was six, seven, eight. Um, and it really, I just didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't understand it. It just didn't make sense to my body. Um, and so after a couple of years, she finally let me drop that. Um, and then my grandfather, he was a guitar player, really good guitar player. So he bought me a guitar and, and he got me some lessons for my birthday and I took guitar for about a year. And again, it just didn't make sense to the way my body wanted to approach music. I just, I didn't like it. It didn't feel right. It was just really uncomfortable for me. But then when I would watch people play the drums, you know, on TV, this was back in the 70s, I guess, um, that made sense. I knew exactly what they were doing. It, it made total sense to me, to the song. And I told my parents, if I got a drum set, I know I could play it. And they were like, girls don't play the drums. We're not going to get you a drum set. You've already quit these other two instruments. And so at about 12, I decided I was going to just buy my own drum set. So I mowed lawns all summer and saved up about 60 bucks, bought a crappy little drum set. Um, I love it. Although now, now I know it wasn't a crappy drum set. It was a Ringo Starr type Ludwig. Wow. And, you, that, um, and you I bought that myself for, out of, You bought it for 60 I did bucks? I for 60 bucks. That's, you I got did. a steal. I did get a steal, and um, the guy had wanted to get rid of that so he could get a Blue Vista light. So he was just ready to get rid of it. I, so, own a, uh, I, I still that. own a Blue Vista light. Right. <laughs> that was the big thing, you know, back in the 70s. I right. guess it was about 76, maybe. I still play mine now. So, and, yeah. They, well, they have a, a really unique sound, and they have such a cool look on stage. Well, you know what? Uh, but uh, a lot I've of got the, that. A lot of the sound guys have told me that they are the best sounding drums for outside live. Um, really? Okay. Yeah. That's what I've been heard because they're okay. loud drums because they're acrylic glass and they're not the yeah, normal yeah. type and they're see through. Obviously, they were first, right. uh, you know, some of the first to be see through back in the day. And obviously, John Bonham of Led Zeppelin made them very famous with his amber ones. Right. But, but yeah, no, I've had multiple professional sound guys tell me that those Vista Light kits are the best kits for outdoors because they're loud drums. And when they mic them, they just are incredible. They're booming. Yeah, they're 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 a great drum set. Uh, but that's that's how I started. I I bought myself the kit. I taught myself how to play over the summer at least a little bit, and then to get into seventh grade band, um, I I would have had to have played in sixth grade band. So when I signed up for seventh grade band, I told them, of course I played sixth grade band. I didn't, and of course I know how to read music. I didn't. But um, so <laughs> I, I just love kind that. of. <laughs> So I just watched the other guys in the drum line, what they were doing as the music was going rolling by, and, and then I tried to copy it, and that's kind of how I learned. And so um, that's how it started for me, is just um, kind of lying my way through and, and making sure that I got a spot, and then just, you know, far ahead, you know, I had to learn how to do it, and that's where it started anyway for that me. That is amazing. I love your story. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> That's great. So yeah. basically, you were not telling the truth about what you knew, and then you ended up playing drums because of it. <laughs> I was like, isn't that the first thing you do right. to be successful yeah, well, as a I musician? I going to let yes. that one little yes. thing be the obstacle that kept me out of band. I so. love that. Well, kudos to you, because you're a freaking amazing drummer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and you've gotten endorsements and all kinds of cool stuff, and you're kind of like a Christian rock drummer, right? 
Yeah, well, um, I do play at churches, and um, but then I have my own band that I actually just started. I, w- I was playing in some cover bands and some different things, and I've been playing at churches ever since I was a kid. Yeah. But um, I just started a new band, and um, th- I play with part of this group on Monday nights at a church, and then it's such a solid band that we thought, why aren't we out gigging together? And I knew a singer that I had, she had been in my last group, Meek and Drive, and so we just kind of married some of the pieces, and now we're a new band called Beautiful Chaos, and um, we're, we've got an awesome set list that we're going to be um, putting together and, and be out gigging here um, pretty soon, and so it's just going to be a whole lot of fun. These are amazing musicians, so I, I really can't wait till our, our first gigs roll out. Perfection. I love that, Tammy. Yeah. You're so awesome. Yeah. You're, you tell everybody, you're you. you're based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I am. Yeah. And how long have you been in Tulsa? Uh, we've been, well, I, I grew up in Muskogee, so I'm an Okie from Muskogee, true. I love that. Uh, which is, you know, about 45 minutes away, and... Um, and so it's so I moved it to Tulsa area in Broken Arrow. It's an out, you know, out right outside of Tulsa, uh, about fifteen, eighteen years ago, and I've been here since then. So, um, yeah. I've so been. Do you know? Where I am now. I've actually been to Tulsa several times, and I, if I'd have known you really? then, I would have. Yeah, because I worked in television for Warner Brothers for a long time, hence all my video okay. work <laughs> and my editing skills. Okay. And um, they flew me. We had a sister station in Tulsa, and I flew there to learn uh, the Avid editing system. And I okay, used got to. It. I used to date a girl in, oh, Fort Smith, right? Yeah, and I'm which is about an hour away from here. Right, and I got an animal. Okay, so I was out there on, listen to this, You, this is a fascinating story. When the internet came out, and I'm sorry, Mom, if you're listening. <laughs> when the internet first came out, and you could date online, I found this girl online that I really liked, and she was in Oklahoma. Muldrow, I think, was the name of it. Muldrow, yeah. Muldrow. And so I got on a plane, and I flew to meet her. <laughs> And I bought a dog while I was out there in Stillwater, Oklahoma, which was a oh, little yeah. Yorkie. He was my favorite little Yorkie ever. And w- me and him got on a plane, and we're flying back home on 9-11-2001. Oh, and I was in on a plane coming from Oklahoma to Memphis when I got to Memphis. I was getting ready to board for Louisville. And they backed the plane up and made us evacuate and shut down all the airports Jeez. because nine eleven happened. That's scary. Yeah, right. And all because and yeah. this was back. I mean, I was kind of ballsy. This was back before you could even really put pictures on the internet. So I didn't even know yeah. what anybody looked like. I just took a wild, wild chance. So, yeah, right. <laughs> I've lived some pretty crazy, pretty crazy stuff. Yes, and then, <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah, I've I've just followed my heart my whole life, basically, which has gotten me in a lot of trouble. But that's okay. I'm just over here shaking <laughs> my head, like, oh my god. I know. Can you imagine if I was your child? <laughs> no. Yeah, because I was early 20s. It was I was literally like 21 years old when that no. went down. Yeah. Oh, man. oh, that's scaring me so much right now. Yeah, I me know. too. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I lived through it, and here we are now. Yeah, this, you're we're still alive. 20 something years later. Yeah, but. That was my favorite little dog, Oz. He ended up passing away not too long ago. Broke my heart, but I had him for Sorry. a long time. Yeah, he was the cutest little thing, though. But he came from uh, Stillwater, Oklahoma, which I always loved. Okay. And then later on, uh, early 20s, of course, I'm working for Warner Brothers, and they flew me out there, and I did a lot of work in Tulsa. So I've been there. Yeah, but I want to know why or what like prompted you to start the Drummer Girls United Forum online. Okay. Um, well, about four, almost five years ago, I guess, um, I started, um, going onto YouTube and just trying to find other female drummers. Cause I, I literally did not know one female drummer personally, not one person. And, um, so I started typing in, you know, female drummers, girl drummers, rock drummers, whatever. And I came up with, um, Hillary Jones, Annika Niles, Manuel Caplet, just different, wow. different people. All the greats. Ken Elton. Um, yeah. And so I started looking at these people. I was like, crap, they're, they're good. They're not just good for a girl, you know, quote, I hear that crap all the time, which is, which is infuriating, but these were some fantastic musicians. 
And um, and then I started looking it up on Facebook and seeing if they had other videos and uh, a presence there. And and I actually wrote to these um, to Hillary and to Annika and to Emmanuel, and we started writing back and forth and becoming buddies. And then I actually took my first drum lesson from Annika via Skype the day before my 50th birthday. Wow. And, um, yeah, so I had never had a drum lesson and I didn't know how to really read drum music because I kind of faked my way through all the way through, you know, junior high, high school, my first year in college. Um, but I was a, I was a pretty decent drummer. And so they just kind of gave me a pass that I didn't really have a strong reading skills because I had such good feel to it they could just tell me what to do and I would do it. And so, or if I saw somebody do it, I could copy it. And so I was, um, I just kind of got through that way. And, um, and so I started working with, um, Annika a bit and then I hired Emmanuel to teach me some things, um, her direction. And so anyway, that's kind of how it started. And then I thought, wouldn't it be kind of a, I'm, I'm typing to one person, then to another, to another. Wouldn't it be great if I had them all in one place on Facebook so we could all share ideas and um, I could see where they were going to be touring and, and we could talk about lessons and different things. Just like a group of us, we could talk about what we're all interested in, which is, you know, everything drumming. So I created this group and started adding my female drummer friends. And then they started wanting to add their female drummer friends and then I started looking for female drummers on Facebook and in different forums and invited them to come. And now, you know, we're 1,200 strong, about 65 countries. Mm-hmm. And daily, I'm getting more and more and more people asking to be part of this group. And then, of course, Dan Schinder got, um, you know, word about this group. And he invited me to come on. And he started sharing my videos. And he's interviewed me. And, of course, we've met. And, and he's done some great things to promote um our group within drum talk tv and so it's just kind of blossomed from there but it's become a real my my goal for it is to be a a place of encouragement and a place of education and kind of a place of camaraderie for female drummers or even females that want to to start playing or want to be around other musicians, girls that play the drums and they're thinking about getting into it or maybe their daughter wants to play or something, this would be the place because right. there's no um, level that's not acceptable in this group. So we've yeah. got professionals that are touring with big artists and we've got people that just picked up their first pair of sticks this week. So everything in between and it's all acceptable and we're all very willing and able to share information as people want it. Yeah, well, kudos to you. I've met some of the coolest female drummers from that site. And, of course, I'm yeah, always seriously. I'm always posting my drummer cam videos when I'm out playing. And um, just my, you know, memories will pop up of things that I've done. I always share it in there. And then next thing I know, like, well, just yesterday, one of the younger female musicians reached out to me behind the scenes and was asking me questions about teaching and, you know, what, what my, uh, yeah. you know, opinion was about her doing this or that or whatever, you know, and they'll ask me questions about that. technique or, yeah, or reading a piece. A lot of people reach out to me because I read so good, you know, because I've been right. teaching for 12 years. Um, and right. I mean, you know, I'm like 20 musicals deep and I've always read music and I can fly through reading drum set music. My sight reading skills are like off the charts. So a lot of people contact me about reading a piece or reading a snare piece or something like that. And then I always make them a video. Thank goodness for technology. And then be like, this is right. how you play it and then send it back. And then they're always like, wow, thank you so much. You know, I always try to, you know, network online and thanks to you, I yeah. can do that. Um, And not only that, but I wanted to ask you another question because you have actually met Viola Smith, who is like one of my idols. And there's a there's a famous picture of you online um, with Viola. And I'm like, how was that? Because I talked to Dan Schinder yesterday and I was telling him, you know, I'm on a book, uh, a women drummers book, and it's all about her, basically. But I've never met her, but I send her birthday cards every year telling her thank you for everything you've done for women um and music and women drumming and and whatnot and you know how was meeting viola smith because she's historic yeah she's she's an amazing person um i i'm friends with carl newman who is the nephew of bill ludwig and um carl and i were pming back and forth on facebook and 
uh, we were talking about different drumming things, you know, just as we all do. And um, he was saying, hey, have you ever heard of viola? And I said, well, viola. absolutely. She was viola? like, is it viola? Uh, well, I guess, you know, viola. Kentucky. I, I called her viola. She didn't correct me, so I don't know if that's right or not. Uh, but, <laughs> Love that. But he said, have you ever met her? And I said, oh, my gosh, that's a dream of mine. But I, I figure I never will. And he said, well, you know, um, if you're coming to the NAMM show, she's outside of L.A. about an hour. Maybe I could set something up. And I was like, no way. And he said, let me make a few phone calls. And I said, oh, my gosh. So he had done an interview with her, and I've seen it, and I've commented, and I guess that's how we started talking about it. But um, he called me back, and he said, I've set it up. If you can go on this day at this time, um, she wants to spend the afternoon with you, and you can have lunch with her and talk. And I said, oh, my gosh, I, I, I was floored. So I showed up, and I had uh, my iPad, and she allowed me to have it on the table, and I just let it roll while we were talking and eating, and she shared all kinds of stories with me about playing for all the different presidents and being in the big bands and touring with all these other musicians and all these stories with all these, you know, people back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s that we all know of, but those were just her buddies and, um, you know, people that she toured with. Uh, it was, it's incredible. And then a lady that I guess is her assistant, she brought out a stack of papers for me that she had copied, just kind of her story in her own words, and she had it typed and gave it to me. And um, I was like, oh, man, it was like it was a treasure to me. And then I took a couple of pair of new sticks. I signed a pair for her. She signed a pair, and I kept them. And then we did, like, drum rolls on the table, and I, I filmed some of that. And wow. um, I've actually never edited it all down and put out the 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 film. I need to do it just because it's us sitting there talking and, and eating and maybe not too exciting to anybody else, but it was – the thrill of it's a lifetime exciting for to me. me because I I still have yet to meet her. Um, Angela Smith, who wrote the book um, "Women Drummers," I think they're kin somehow because she's out in Austin, Texas, okay. and I'm not for okay. sure. I don't want to like speak for her completely, but I I'm pretty sure they are. And uh, you know, I one of my goals in life, like you, is to actually get to talk to her. So Dan yesterday was like, "Well, let me try to hook that up, you know, and see if she can do a call in." Yeah, day. you're running out of time because I think her next birthday she's 107. I know, 106 or 107. And she's still playing in, in drums. November. Yeah, there's yeah, them. Um, I was looking online to try to find her famous um, video. One of my favorites is, uh, and I can't pronounce their name, but it's. Basic, is it the Cockettes? Is that how you say it? Yeah. The Cockettes, yeah. the famous video of her drum solo. And, you know, I try to teach my students this. A lot of people don't know. The drummers were usually the band leaders back in the day. They sat right up in front, and the whole orchestra and singers were behind them. So right. she was, like, at the forefront of that. And I call her my shero. Um, because yeah, um, and can, oh, she's a pioneer. She, if you saw uh, the way she had her drum set set up, I mean, we didn't it's see insane. other drum sets come about like that for years. Correct. After that, and in fact, Dan couldn't even remember what the name of those drums are. They look like little taiko drums, like the Japanese taikos that sit on the side and you hit them with the sticks above your head. Um, yeah, she, yeah. She always played with those on each side of her, which was really cool. And I'm looking that at the was, video right now. It, here. Ingenious. It is ingenious. Um, you know, she was with Gretsch, and she was also with Ludwig. Yeah. She, I know she was with both of those for for a few years. Uh, she was with Gretsch first, I believe, and then she went with Ludwig. I think that's how it ended up. Yeah. Yeah, and I tell you what, uh, it's a dream of mine, and I know I'm running out of time. I'm trying to get to her before she gets any older. But every every November, I think her birthday is in November, or October. I always send her a happy birthday, Viola. I love you. Thank yeah, you for doing everything that you've done. November, right? Thank you for doing what you do for women drummers and being a pioneer because she was really getting some flack back in the day. You know what I'm saying? I mean, women yeah, were supposed to be yes. home with the kids and doing all that stuff that you do. And uh, she was like, nope, I'm going to go play drums and be one of the best female drummers of, you know, humankind. And she was she was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So do no you, one like her. Do you have um, any other idols? I'm sure you do growing up. Were there because I mean, I don't know how old you are and I'm not going to call you out on on uh, radio. But oh, that's I, OK. I'm I'm 54. OK, 54. So I was born in 65. OK, so. 
when you were growing up, obviously we didn't see a whole lot of females. I mean, I know that I only saw Karen Carpenter and Sheila E. That's all I knew about. Um, did you have... Yeah, um, when I was a junior or senior in high school is when the Go-Go's hit it big. Yeah. And so that was the very first female drummer that I had ever seen. Hey, by I the, had never seen anybody else play. Can I, I want to tell you this because I don't know if you've been listening to our show, but uh, last week I had Alice DeBurr on, who is the female wow. drummer for Fanny. And Fanny was, well, she was the first female drummer. They also, they had a second female drummer named Bree Howard, but they were out in L.A. And she, they were the first female band signed to Capitol Records ever in the 70s. You know, rock and rollers back in the day when you weren't supposed to be. And she, they helped get the Go-Go's their career started. And she managed the wow. Go-Go's. Yeah. And then I, I, had Janet, Amazing. I had Janet Robin on yesterday, who was my lead guitarist in L.A., um, and she studied under Randy Rhodes of Ozzy Osbourne, who wrote Crazy Train and all this really cool stuff. Wow. And she was telling me, you know, she's great friends with the Bangles and a lot of those go-go chicks. Because she, she grew up basically on, you know, Sunset Strip out in uh, Beverly Hills and Hollywood yeah. playing her whole career. But she went on to tour with um, Lindsey Buckingham and Meredith Brooks and all kinds of like really awesome nice. players. But the go-go's keep popping up here on, uh, on this station. But I was a big fan of them, too. Yeah. Yeah. What about the Bangles? Because you know uh, Debbie and Vicky Peterson, the sisters, they started the Bangles, and I don't know right. if you paid attention yeah, to them well, too. For me, it was the Go Go's, and then you know I found out that Karen Karen was my favorite singer back Carpenter. in the day. But then I yeah, yeah, then I realized she was a drummer, and she wasn't just a drummer; she was an amazing drummer. Uh, she studied and under so, Hal Blaine of the Wrecking Crew, who basically it, played on every TV show, and Sonny and Cher, and the. Um, Oh, the Beach Boys, yeah. yeah, all those tracks. Oh, he's a legend. Oh, yeah, super legend, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, they were they were the two that, that I guess would would really be my heroes back back then. Yeah, well, that's that's super yeah. rad. You know, I only had like guy drummer influences, Bonham, and um, I mean, I just loved everybody. I was a classic rocker, so I liked all the rock and roll yeah. stuff. Obviously, if you're a drummer, you got to love that stuff. And then as I grew older, I started to get into, like, Bernard Purdy, Steve Gadd, uh, uh, James Gadson, Bill Withers, you know, uh, gosh, there's so many. And uh, Tony Williams. Yeah. <clears throat> Tony Williams is one of my all-time favorites. Of course, he was with Miles Davis. I was talking about he is so good. He was like a virtuoso when he was a kid. And when yeah. you, if you watch his videos, I mean, he is so good. You don't even know where his count one is. You can't even figure out what he's doing. And I'm one of those drummers yeah. that anything I hear, I can write it out by hand and notation. And I yeah. mean, he's one of those drummers that I would have no clue how to write out any of his stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just, he was amazing. I mean, mind blowing. I like, you know, Steve Smith. Oh, man. There's so many. Jeff Picaro, you know, all the greats. Oh, yeah. Basically. But as far as females are concerned, yeah. I mean, Sheila E. Viola Smith, Allison Miller is a great friend of mine. She toured with everybody, you know, from Brandy Carlisle to Natalie, um, oh, the chick of uh, 10,000 Maniacs, you know, I forget her name. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Anyway, yeah, so, um, I mean, there's so many these days. Cindy Blackman Santana, fantastic. Oh, People love yeah. Meg White, you know, of the White Stripes. Um, right. All kinds of really cool drummers. But I tell you what. Out of all of the female drummers I have seen live, you have some of the best female drummers in that group because their videos yes. from, is it Julian? Um, her Juliana. Videos, Juliana, yeah. her videos, uh, Akita. I mean, some of the chicks that you've met over your career is just amazing to me. Yeah. It's crazy that five years ago, I didn't know one female drummer. <laughs> and now, I mean, Dan calls me the most connected female to female drummer in probably anywhere you i know are. i know so many of yes, them yes you do um and that's just happened in a in a few years and um and i'm not really even sure how it happened it just has happened i've become friends with all these these female drummers and it's become a really tight sisterhood and a really uh, um awesome community yeah. that we've created and we keep it really positive and in a happy place and a safe place for everybody that wants to be part of it. And, and a lot of people will tell me sometimes when I go on Facebook during the day, this is the only group that I even stop by to check on because I just know it's going to make me feel happy when I'm there. And, 
So I, I love that. I, it's me kind too. of a little, you know, kind of a little mission for me to, to keep this going. Yeah, well, I appreciate everything you've done for the female drumming community. I'm a big fan of yours. I love to watch your videos. Thank you. You, you just make Thank me you. happy. I like anybody who makes me happy. And you, um, <laughs> just watching you, you can tell you're just a musician, kind of like me. I, you know, I do it because I love it. It comes from my soul and my heart. And, uh, you know, yeah, if I'm not playing, I'm sure. not happy. I go crazy sometimes. So I right. like to just keep playing. And, and it's always cool to meet um powerful positive females who encourage other females to be their best yes yeah absolutely i appreciate everything you've done so tammy listen we're gonna wrap it up but i want you to tell everybody if they want to get um on the drummer girls united forum they can go to facebook obviously if they want to check out your bands where do they go um it will actually we're going to be opening up a band page uh soon i just haven't done it yet because i'm not finished with our logo but okay. um, if they want to go to my um, fan page, it's Tammy Mitchell Woods Drums, and then I will post all of the new information about my band um, there. And then cool. if they want to join us w at, with the Drummer Girls United group, they just go to Facebook, look for Drummer Girls United, and there's going to be a couple of questions. Are you a female drummer? And tell me anything about your, your drumming experience. And it cool. can be, I just learned how to play, or I've been playing since I was, you know, three. I don't... I just need to know that you, you are who you are, and then welcome to our group. I hope you enjoy it there and find a lot of friends and, and get a lot of education. And you can share with us just like we'll share with you, and um, it's going to be good. Fantastic. Well, I just love you, Tammy. You're just awesome. So keep rocking it love out as too, always. Keep posting your videos. <laughs> keep being positive. Hit me up behind the scenes if you ever need anything. You know, I'm always here for you. I'm always saying a prayer for you, too. I promise. Because I, I know. Yes, uh, and we need to do a collaboration, I still think. I would love that. I would absolutely yep. love that. Yes, and I know Me that you, you're dealing with uh, some health issues, so I always say a little prayer for you uh, very often. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Tammy, uh, you take care, and I'll be talking to you soon. Thank you for calling in on LRS102.com. All right. Thanks, girl. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right, bye -bye. That was Tammy Mitchell Woods. She is a, an awesome female drummer that's helped connect everybody. I mean, she literally just has met, I mean, every almost every female drummer across the country and her story is amazing isn't it yes i also just love what she said about connecting females and being supportive and us females have to stick together and yeah. hone our craft